What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual Zoom studio with a truly amazing human being. And that would be Charlene Giselle. Charlene, how are you? I'm really good, Jay. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. It's so exciting for me to have you here. So you guys, let me give you guys a little bit about Charlene's background and her bio. She is a former Cam Cambridge trained lawyer. She was actually very successful in the matrix, the money magic system of the world, uh, and kind of had like a spiritual renaissance in her late twenties and was like, screw this. And now she's a primal health coach, a yoga, Nitra, a Tantra meditation facilitator. And of course my favorite term, a spiritual biohacker. Um, we are going to have an insane conversation here today. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And as everybody who knows and follows me now, um, understands like this is, this is my jam, right? Like I literally live to talk consciousness and spirituality and upliftment. Um, but before we jump into the topics, which are um, numerous, um, you know, how did Charlene Giselle get on the Jay Campbell podcast today? Uh, I love that question. It's our passion for peptide that brought us together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> From one biohacker to another. I'm really uh, loving to use uh, technology to optimize my health, but in a very conscious manner. So sure. Technology, yes, but technology that's going to serve me and not technology that's going to take me uh, back <laughs> from my journey. And uh, I think peptide when it comes to um, cosmeceutical is really the latest hack that you can have for your skin. So my passion for finding the latest biohack has brought me to you and I'm so grateful for it. That's beautiful. And I love how you said that too. And because a lot of people today without mentioning names are like kind of walking that edge that, you know, what I would call the arduous but edged path of transhumanism, of using technology for not the purposes of, you know, using it, but it using you. And, and it's a fine line. You know, there's a lot of really, you know, very high level people out there right now that are really embracing this like biobot, you know, chip, take, become transhumanist. And obviously you very clearly quantified that, that you want to maintain your sovereignty as a human being, which is obviously so important. All right. Well, let's talk about the topics. Um, and again, this is going to go a lot of different ways. So if we don't talk of every different thing, you know, I'll definitely allow you some time at the end. And obviously I want to announce right now too, that um, Charlene is actually going to promote a seer custom. So she's going to be one of our influencers uh, promoting our product. So I'll talk more about that at the end of the show. Um, but so from being a corporate lawyer, you know, classically educated and trained it from Cambridge, traveling the world, um, to, to going on a spiritual journey, you know, a sojourn, um, you know, talk about that. 
Sure. Um, I think it was just the realization that I was chasing the ever external, meaning right. you get attached to so many different labels and then you layer them on top of one another. So first you pursue a, a sort of material comfort and then you pursue a social title. With the social title comes the professional title. With that, the ego keeps building up and up and up. And the chase can be without end really however the price to pay for that somewhere in the process is health deterioration right. loss of contact with nature loss of contact with your essence and it was that moment when i realized all the lists that i had were to-do lists i didn't have a single to be list i didn't even know what yeah. to be list is i wasn't conscious about the way i breathed i wasn't conscious about the way I was walking, interacting with other beings. And um, my environment was very unnatural, artificial lights, no chances to take my shoes off. I, I grew up in the vineyards in the south of France, you know, running in the field and picking up berries and foraging with my parents. But then as you chase corporate success, you can't really go to court bare feet, can you, you know? <laughs> I mean, I wish I could, but I didn't do it, right? <laughs> and, and so there was this wild spirit inside me that was crying out loud because on the one hand, I was getting all this validation, but on the other hand, I was feeling less and less happy. And I couldn't understand how on paper my life could be so good, but inwards, it was meaningless. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to think of ways that I could combine both and I was running after my, my, my work days would be over and it was more like work nights and I would try and fit in a yoga class. I would try and fit in a run. I would try and, but you know, you're always constantly trying and, and you're doing <laughs> very right. little um, in terms of your health. And I was embracing the corporate lifestyle. Um, corporate dinners, corporate drinks, corporate entertainment, corporate networking. There was very little space for healthy eating. Um, I just thought, you know, it's, it's not what I signed up for. It's, it's not what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean I, there's so much that you, you spoke of, you know, not to stop you, but to unpack. Because again, I know that we're going to go a lot of different ways. But, you know, you talked about to be lists. And again, all of us who are, you know, quote unquote, ambitious and driven and successful and determined, you know, we have to do lists, you know, like my phone right now, you know, I, my, I used to have an app called Wanderlust or which was <laughs> one, it was Wanderlist, right. And it became, it got bought out by Bill Gates and now it's to do list. And, you know, I transferred all my things and I had spent years of like dialing it all in, you know, I have my personal finance and I have my life things and I, it's just, I'm laughing, you know, thinking about that, but you said you got further away from your essence. And I think most people don't, most people don't even know what that even means, but obviously here on the Jay Campbell podcast, this is what we really get geeked about. So I want you to look, drill down and what that really means when you said that you lost your essence. Well, I think we forget that we are human beings not human doings right. and everything we do we do how often do you get social recognition or social acknowledgement for being when do you have time to sit down with your breath and to be in pure contemplation what does that even mean because the measure of success in a corporate world is not what you are is what you do what you achieve what you pursue what you take what your kpis and there is very little if not zero measure to success as a human being and that was my realization when i got to my ashram in india and of course i fast forwarded here a little bit so we can no talk yeah about was, the journey. it's perfect segue yeah but there was nothing to hide behind. There was no social badge. There was no professional title. I had no business card. I had right. no, no labels. I was there as myself, just as anyone else that was sharing that room with me as, as, as a human, as a being. And we would share our breath. We would share 
our time, our presence. What does that even mean, being present, right. being truly there, not being in the thinking mode, in the what's next, in the projection, in the what do you want from the person? Are you getting your work ticked off? Are you getting that brief done? Have you gotten your delivery on point? Are you there? Are you understanding how their eye are connecting to yours? Do you feel their breath movement? Are you feeling their vibration? Are you fully present in the conversation with no intention other than being there? How often yeah. do we do that in a corporate setting? Almost, almost never. I mean, it's so beautiful. Um, I mean, we get, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. I mean, you know, it's everything you just said is again, poetic. It, it, it's, it's, it's so hard. And I don't even like using the word hard because like hard is a choice too. Right. But like living in today's modern technologically social media, ego driven, you know, you talked about the I, you know, the, the we and the you, you know, aspect. I mean, like even behind me in my wall, right? Like Jay Campbell and my books and all that stuff, right? Like I see that when I come into my office and it motivates me, but it's not who I am, right? I'm just a spiritual being having a physical experience, right? In mm. this journey. But it's like, until you do what you did or have a conscious awakening. And I think a lot of people, and I know myself, before all those things, you, you realize things way earlier, right? Like the, 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 the ancient mystery schools, the sex, you know, most people, they didn't even take an adept into a school or to attempt to train them until they were 40. And you had this conscious awakening in your 20s. You know, I had this conscious awakening at 42, right? Or, or 41 when I had to hit rock bottom. And where I, where I was going with this is that a lot of people have a dark night of the soul or have something that's so profoundly life altering happen to them. And it's usually negative. Sometimes it can be positive, but most often it's negative because a soul, and I want you to talk about this, but a soul has to be, you know, grasping mm. at straws in a physical body to change because all those things you said, you know, I'm reading Dr. David Hawkins' newest book, and it's not him, it's his wife's and the association. It's actually a person who was a student of him writing it. It's the Map of Consciousness Explained. And they talk about the 99% or 90% of people who are successful never get above 175 on the, low, on the low level of consciousness scale because they're mm. stuck at the desire to make money. And to have more material things and to, again, all those things that you very eloquently and elegantly explained earlier about like this and this and this and this and the corporate ladder and the game and the game and the game. And it's like, you, you, it's corporate insanity, really. But it's the insanity of life because if we lose perspective on why we're here, what really truly matters, it's none of those material things. Your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's a material thing that can come in the way. However, I think there is something to be said about gratitude for, for the journey. And, and the reason I want to say that now is because I don't want to sound as though I'm not grateful for my sure. corporate training sure. and for my corporate colleagues and for all the learning. And I think it is what it is. It's a learning experience. And perhaps you can do it all. You can have the conscious awakening and still work in a corporate format but you need some serious guides to help you through that journey and to really keep you connected to who you are. And I think that's my mission statement now is helping people that are embedded in the corporate, in the corporate world and want to pursue their corporate career, but taking human being breaks within that journey to drop into their essence. And how do you do that? You meditate, right. you pick up on breath work, you activate a tantric practice within your loving unit, your loving bubble or your couple or yourself, if you're on your own, you become more aware of nature around you. You go and connect, take off your shoes whenever you can. You connect into ancestral wisdom by eating whole food, connecting to mother nature, acknowledging her as such. And you just drop into who you are and your ancestors as well. I think we forget where we come from and we have this very small vision of humanity as this 10,000 or 20,000 year old species when we are yeah. nearly 3 million year right. old race, right? As a human race. And I think wisdom lies in the ancestors because mm -hmm. we are who we are today because our ancestors did what they did. 
So yes, look forward, look ahead, absolutely. But when it comes to wisdom, look backwards a little bit and, and look at our ancestors and look at the profound learning that can be drawn from those ancestral um, rules that we forget along the way. It's beautiful. I, I want to talk a little bit about you. Um, well, I have to ask you, like, you know, because obviously I talked about, you know, what transformed me while having a dark night of the soul, you know, which I had a couple and most people who follow me know my story, but like what made you, what was the breaking point in the corporate world that made you realize like, this is not who I am and I want more? I think I had a few. Um, so the, the reason I pursued the dream of going to Cambridge and becoming a graduate there was uh, probably my dad in the sense that he was a very, very successful broker. And he was also passionate about marine biology. And he grew up breeding Darwin to me. Or oh, the little girl <laughs> fell asleep to, <laughs> to different stories. But I guess my dream was to go and study where Charles Darwin did. So that's yeah, what I did in sure. Christ College. Um, and my dad was my role model and my inspiration all, all along. Uh, what I wanted to be when I grew up was like daddy. You know, right. because he, he was sure. so successful. But then um, he had a heart attack and a stroke while I was at work. And I was in the middle of a very big case and I was the lead associate on the case. And I couldn't go to the hospital because, um, well, I mean, you always can, right? Yeah. But in that point, I sure. really couldn't because right. I was caught up in such a big case at work. And, and, and as sad as it is, my instinct was, well, I. I I have to go, but I also have this work commitment. Right. And by the time I did go, um, it was 48 hours later. Um, when I got into the room, he had the stroke in front of me, another wow. one. So, and he was, he was the reason I became the lawyer that I did in the sense that I wanted to be this powerful, successful leader. Um, and I wanted to be just as strong as daddy was, except, you know, Throw some somewhere in the process, his health price tag became really heavy, which was potentially life or death. Right. He, he was overworked, overstressed his whole life. And, and so that dream sort of shattered into a million pieces because I thought, well, okay, so you are at the top of the pinnacle years before retirement and you're facing death. That's the price to pay for working yeah. that hard. Yeah. And I had no, no, no concept before that, that this could happen. I took health and life for granted. You yeah. just play with it, right? You just, Absolutely. you know, it, it gets gifted and it gets given and you can do whatever you want. You can right. just live on with three hours sleep, crap diet, no workout, no movement, no connection to nature, no breath work, and you'll be fine, right? That's a story you want to believe in. So, and so many entrepreneurs do, by the way, you know, and my wife always says that most people don't realize or care anything about their health until it's taken away. Right. And so that's exactly what you're describing. And so that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, when it comes to me, I don't know where I got it from. Um, I, I got a lot of my motivation, I think, from my dad to the intellectual rigors and stuff like that. But uh, he was always running, you know. So he, there was always that connection to, exp, you know, uh, exercise that was right. kind of like hardwired into most of his children. Not all of them, but um, but, but but you're so right. And you know, I, I I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you're making such a mm -hmm. profound point. I mean, the the reality is is that it doesn't matter how much money you make or how successful you know, your titles and your, you know, your, your advancements in your corporate world or whatever it is that you do, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, you know, it, 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 it's, it's literally having a life, like you said, connecting to nature, being able to grab your grandchildren when you're older and, you know, be functionally strong enough where you don't have pain in your hips or your back or whatever. I mean, so many people lose connection of that, Charlene. Like they really don't understand that being healthy is literally the creative beacon to experiencing life, as you said, as a state of being Absolutely. Versus, versus a state of doing. Exactly. And, and you know, I, I just close off the story by, by putting sort of the dots together, because as part of his recovery, my dad was advised to pick up yoga. 
wow. to build up that mind to body connection. And I had been doing yoga for a few years prior to that. But for me, that was the ha ha moment. That was right. So I'm not going to let just anyone teach my dad yoga. I'm right. going to freaking exactly. become the teacher so right. that I can help my dad make the best recovery in the world. And so that he can be his self again. And, and, and I have to say, he made a full recovery. Um, yeah. It was hard work, but I'm still kicking his ass. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> and, and, and it's great. And I, I, I like to think of him as, you know, my greatest teacher in the sense, but also my first student. Because um, right. right. shortly after that, I decided to become a yoga teacher myself. And, uh, and he was, in fact, my first student. That's so, so awesome. Well, there you go. The, the teacher becomes the student. I want to ask you about your, you know, going to India, right? Because like sure. any person walking the path, you know, dreams of that. And I've honestly had many experiences in my life and days where I just felt like, you know what, screw all this nonsense, F off. I'm going to go live in a cave. I'm going to go to Tibet. You know, you know, I mean, again, any, I think anyone who's literally truly walking the path, as I call it, or the, you know, the attainment, the seeking attainment of a higher consciousness has had those moments where mm. we have separated from material, you know, attachment to the recognition that there's, wow, you know, this is so awe inspiring to be. And so right. it's like the next evolution is like, okay, I want to go, you know, and I'm, my wife and I, and my wife, was, I'm very blessed. She's very similar spiritually to me, but like, she's just like, go, I know you want to. And I'm like, I'm not going to leave the kids and you behind, but oh. it's like, it's like that, it's that feeling. So obviously, you know, you were young enough without children and you did it. Talk about it. Like, what was it like sure. to be around spiritual masters in India? So I'll tell you a little bit about my inner motivation. I, I like to believe that I'm a very, um, <laughs> big believer in authenticity sure. and I like to understand logically what connects things together and where things come from. So as a student of yoga, having only practiced it in London back then, I of course knew that it originated from India, sure. but I then became that commercial yogi myself, you know, the <laughs> nice little mats, the nice little My leggings and you're done, you're sorted. <laughs> And I thought, right, is, is this, is this, again, let's talk about the essence. Is this the essence of yoga? Is downward facing dog what we're talking about here? I have a feeling there is a bit more profound aspect to that. And, right. and you know, I studied philosophy as well. So I was really thinking there is more to it. I was reading a lot of book on the philosophy of yoga and thought, right, what we're being sold in the West as yoga is one aspect, it's sure. the asana, it's the physical practice, almost like a workout. But, but what about the mindset? What about the breath? What about the philosophy? What about the solid pillars behind it? And to me, to learn it, I had to really strip myself off from you know, the pretty leggings and the shiny mat and go where it came from, which right. was the source, being in an ashram, being with authentic yogic monk and, and really try to understand from them in complete humility, of course, because although I thought I knew a little bit, I knew nothing. <laughs> the reality is, right. you know, I, I arrived and I knew nothing, not of yoga, but of myself. And what is yoga if not understanding who you are and dropping into your essence as a human being? And when I arrived there, it was, it was tough. The conditions were really tough. You know, I had never been that hot before. I never had to get up that early before. Um, the, the level of discomfort, physical, was extreme because it's not so much a one hour AC class with a nice little microphone and all the condition perfectly controlled. It's rough. You arrive and it's it's um, a really rough floor and it's, you're dripping in sweat. It's, it's extremely hot and we don't have mats really. You just sit down and meditate for hours and, and that's it. You just show up there and you meditate and you breathe and you stay still. And I think a lot of people forget that yoga is, as we think of it, the asana is only to get you to the point of stillness. Right. But again, stillness ties in with being and we're so used to doing and 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 being um 
in the action that we forget to stay still. Yes. Stillness is the most important thing a human being can embrace. Uh, you know, the great Walter Russell, who has taught me so much about the world. I mean, I think all of us that are walking this path now and at this level of, you know, conscious awareness um, know that the only way you get there is through stillness. It's through introspection and contemplation and meditation and grounding in nature and all the things that you've talked about. But if you don't have a practice, as I call it, of stillness, mind silence, there's no way that you can even get to where you and I are right now having this conversation. Again, and I, and I hate to say this, like I don't want to say this egoically or judgmentally. And it's not. It's coming from a point of observation. Um, most people right now, Charlene, are still not even capable of even having this conversation that you and I are having right now. And again, it's not a fault of their own. It's just that they're so stuck in the matrix, right? Like mm. look at right now without taking this to a political conversation, because we're not going to, but like, just look at the divide mm. on this planet right now. And it's ultimately because so many people lack the inner work. Right. And you know what else? I think they don't like the idea of anything uncomfortable. We right. live in a world where we are eternal babies. We exactly. are like, we want to be nannied. We want to be comfortable. Otherwise we cry like a baby. They want the and easy I, button for everything. Yeah. That's it. And, and you know what I learned in India was embrace discomfort. That is where magic happens. Totally. So first time I did a very long fast, like a pure water fast was in India before. I didn't know. I didn't know about fasting. Sure. I mean, yeah. I, I was one of those people that ate a regular amount right. all the time. And right. I was told by my spiritual master, you, you've got to fast. You really have to fast. And, and then you have to be silent. Not silent. I, I talk for a living. That's what I do. I'm a lawyer. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, hold on. I, I, I don't eat. I don't talk. And oh, and then circadian rhythm. Oh, wait, hold on. What's that? There is the moon and there is the sun, and I should go to bed when it's dark and I should awaken when the sun comes up. What do you mean? Let me switch my light on and, and forget about the sun and the moon. It's like, well, how disconnected are we from our natural environment? Yeah. Before I went to live in India. I hate to admit it, but it's true. I didn't know the mood cycles. I didn't know which, which cycle I was in. I didn't know what time of, of um, the month in relation to the moon we were in. Right. I, I wasn't really connected with sunrise and sunset. I didn't understand the importance of sun exposure for my vitamin D. And I didn't understand the importance of grounding or earthing right. and the importance of fasting and breathing yeah. and all those things. They're not comfortable, but they are essential. They, they are the things that made us the humans that we are. Yeah. Our ancestors fasted, sure. not out of choice, not because it was cool, because they had to, because exactly. they were hunting exactly. and they were nomads. They didn't have a little breakfast cereal bowl, did they? No. Um, but we've forgotten all those common sense common knowledge rule because we've been seeking comfort and you know Vinhoff is to me one of the greatest teacher when it comes to um cold bath and breath work and i'm 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 a really big fan of his uh, teachings and and that's what he says you know na nature is our greatest teacher comfort is our greatest teacher the cold is our teacher yeah. and, and be there be in that experience don't chase comfort don't chase the ac be in the cold be in the heat be in nature and see yeah. what happens yeah no 100 percent. all of that is again beautiful um I mean, there's so many things we can go with you go, in growing directions of. I like, I like, you know, how you came up with the title. As I told you that, you know, my social media team and I also crafted that a year ago, which is spiritual biohacker. And obviously now the word biohacker in our communities is obviously overused. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's like, it's like hard to even define what it even means. I mean, you know, I could make an argument and I've said this before on various shows that, you know, guys that were, and gals, of course, there was more men, you know, just known in the present field, but not that there weren't women doing the same thing. But like 30 years ago, like the males and females that were doing bodybuilding, 
and like, you know, performance stuff. Uh, they were the original true biohackers because they were doing stuff that nobody had any idea about. There was no body of record. There was no internet. There was nothing. I mean, like, those were the real biohackers. Like the people that were like in the 50s and 60s that were like experimenting with liver tablets, you know, to increase glycogen restoration or stuff like that or, or replenishment or any of that stuff. So it's like, it's funny, right? You know, that's, it's a more of a modern term now. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the optimized tribe with US Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. Talk a little bit about like what you do, like what, you know, what, what is your day, day consist? Like what does Charlene's day consist of right now to obviously stay spiritually grounded, but at the same time to stay in, you know, peak fit, uh, fit health. I start my day with a gratitude practice and I think it's essential. The first thing I do when I open my eyes, um, I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for waking up, You're alive. opening yeah. my eyes. And um, we're creatures of habits. So I stuck my habits. So I, I love to have my coffee, but I know that I'm not going to allow myself to have my coffee before I don't my gratitude journal. So I just put my little habits talk, you know, in front of me to help me. And I have little stones or little reminders as well that I can put anywhere so that when I see them, it's my gratitude prompt. It's my gratitude remember, rem reminder. So right. if I haven't done it, I'll be reminded. Um, then I start also with some really deep breath, nice. just breathing consciously. Whether you apply a particular breathwork methodology or modality like box, box breathing or alternate nostril, at this point, I think it doesn't matter. What matters is conscious breathing. Yes, of course, 100%. And you can you know, it, make it more powerful and have very sophisticated breathwork technique. But breathe consciously is my top tip. You yeah. know, be aware of your inhale and your exhales. Um, and then I'll have uh, my coffee. I like to have adapto adaptogen coffee, so mushroom mix coffee uh, or my bulletproof coffee um, with MCT oil, uh, grass-fed butter. I have it probably three times a week. I don't eat breakfast. I don't really believe in breakfast. Right. Um, I like to do intermittent fasting. So I usually have my first meal around lunchtime. Um, and it will be probably... 50 to 70 percent fat um so i have very fatty cuts of meat or organ meats and um, i cook everything from scratch so yeah. whole food only and i i'm not completely carnivore i do eat mushrooms and berries but i eat uh, local and local and seasonal as much as possible and then i walk um after my lunch i really believe in digestive walking so i like to move my body after I've eaten for my gut health and optimization, um, take my breath while I work and I listen to nature and I stay still for a moment, really be in silence. And I invite all my senses. So I do a little sense repertory. I just ask myself, okay, so what do I see? What do I feel? What do I hear? And what do I taste? Yeah. I, I just go through this process of inviting my senses to find a little bit of daily ecstasy and people get very very attached to this ecstasy idea as something phenomenal that needs to happen like you're witnessing firework while having this most amazing sex party while having this this and that ecstasy is in everyday life exactly. i find washing my hands ecstatic yeah i find running into a 
cold uh, a shower that is warm and I feel every single drop that's my, on that's my literally my favorite thing is when I take a hot shower I could literally stay in a hot shower for five days straight right like that's ecstatic. it increases BDNF you know that, I mean that's a that's a little thing like a little hack and then obviously going from a cold shower to a hot shower it, it even does it more because the prions but anyway I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you but that's no, so no not at all no there is no interruption there's just flow and I just think that uh, perhaps that's part of my tantric um, everyday hack is living in a state that is yeah ecstatic and ecstatic. finding pleasure and beauty and and it's always there. I think people really focus on what's taken away from them that's external, but then they don't focus on what's still there. Right. The sky is there, even on the worst day. Have a look at the clouds and just so true. be in awe of the beauty. There is always the sun somewhere, even if you live in England, <laughs> it's there behind the coast. <laughs> just, just acknowledge the magnificence of nature. Look at your hands and, and be like, wow, that's a fucking amazing tool, yeah. right? Like, yeah. that's, you've got hands, that's amazing. Just, just be in awe of yeah. everything that is and, and the, connect, the connectedness. We also forget that connectedness, that soil, the ground, the flowers, the, you know, I, I could go a bit woo-woo, I think, if you let no, me. Please, please. <laughs> no, to go woo-woo, it's totally true. I mean, you're very much like my wife. She says the same thing. She goes, just be grateful that you have hands that work and that your fingers work. It's, it's so true. I mean, it, 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 life is simple, but we make it so complex because we, again, we get so caught up in this the social media, this glitz and glam, this fake holographic reality that is put for, forward in front of us. And if you get so caught into it, and again, you know, with so many women, you know, it's about likes and so many men, it's about follows. And, you know, it's like all of it is nonsense. None of it is real. The only thing that's real is that we are a spirit, again, in a physical body having an experience. So right, right. enjoy the experience, as you're saying. Just be grateful that you're having the experience at all. What else matters? It, it, all these things that we get so caught up on, like, you know, finances and being able to afford this or pay that bill or do this or do that. And people get so stuck on it. And they just can't realize that like, dude, like you're, you're, you know, an infinite being in a physical body right now. And you're not going to die. Your physical body will give out, but you'll just continue as a soul or as a spirit form. And that's what people just, they don't get that. They're so caught up in this finite, you know, limitation of existence where it's like, if I don't do this, this, and this Charlene by this time, I'm going to be a failure. Or, you know, I have very wealthy, well-to-do friends who will say to me, bro. But if I die, who's going to take care of so-and-so? And I'm like, dude, you're not their steward. You are only in control of you, not even your kids. Your kids as souls chose you as their dad or mom, mm -hmm. if whoever you are. And so it's like when you have that level of awareness, everything else just drops away because you realize that what matters again is that spirit, that soul enjoying the ride, right? Remember the Nissan commercial, they created that awesome hashtag back before there were hashtags. And it was like, enjoy the ride. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy the ride. And also, you know, that may be a very bold statement, but I'm going to make it anyway. You can have it all in absolutely. some ways. What I mean by that is I never felt that I had to choose between being corporate or being hippie right. or being a spiritual person or being successful. I would consider myself very successful right now, but also highly spiritual. And I'm embracing that yes. because I think what's important is finding your mission. What's your mission? How many people are you going to serve from a place of totally. love, kindness, and authenticity? Totally. I, I believe my mission was being a lawyer and that I was of service, which I was, by the way. And I'm, I'm very proud of my past life, if I may call it that, <laughs> and my past life within this life as a lawyer. But I do believe that the same motivation of serving others yeah. is still very much present. But now the commodity has gone from a contract to their higher purpose, their right. health, their yeah. wellness, their well-being. And that fills my joy cup and my love cup so yeah. much. 
Beautiful. And and so when people say, oh, but you've abandoned your career, you've, I'm, I'm thinking, <laughs> I, I abandoned I, your career. I I yeah. haven't. I actually embrace my past career so much, and I I decided to serve everyone that I could within that environment, and that's really my mission statement. My Beautiful. work now as as a coach is to serve corporate workers and all of my clients are currently corporate and and that's what gets me going in the morning because i think right you've chosen to be this brilliant brilliant lawyer banker ceo executive accountant how can i be of service to you right. to help you optimize your health and do what makes you happy every day while being the healthiest version of yourself and do what you do and you love doing for as many years as you can. Yeah. I'm not telling people to quit their job and go live in Nepal or India like I did. I'm trying to make them maximize their time and optimize their health. Beautiful. By the way, how many people, this is an opinion question. And, and, and before I ask that, and again, I could talk to you all day. This is such a fun. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I could go so many different directions with you, but back to what you were saying about the purpose in the morning and having a morning ritual, you know, I've never put, I've never done this on the Jay Campbell podcast. I have done this on live streams with like different people in the spiritual community because people will ask me, but for the first time I'm putting this out. So this is what I say in the morning. Okay. I say, I am, this is my morning mantra every single day. Like you said, you wake up in the morning and you gratitude, you, you, you journal. This is the first thing that for me. And I, I have this pretty much memorized now. And I actually edit it sometimes too, to make it more relevant but I say, I am joy, I am love, I am gratitude. I see, hear, and feel. I'm sorry, I see, hear, and know my purpose is to optimize human health. I am powerful, persuasive, and intentional in all that I say and do, and in surrender and service to source. I love and trust myself, and I am worthy of all the abundance in the universe. And then after, as, as, as you do, I breathe. And I sometimes, depending on my day, how busy I am, you know, if I wake up really early, I'll do 10 very deep breaths and hold and just, mm. Mm. I mean, I can like go into the ecstatic joy right now, right? Cause people that practice breath work regularly can literally go into like an almost orgasmic experience from just breathing. Yes, of but course. It's, but, but it's, that thing, you know, is so critical. And again, it's that ruthless, consistent focus of ritual practice, meaning you do it every day, regardless of where you are. It doesn't matter whether you're in Istanbul, Turkey, or you're in Southern California, you know, you have to do it. And I think the majority of people, even if they do have a ritualistic, you know, hopefully mindfulness uh, routine, don't consistently do it. And when you don't right. consistently do it, I'll give my wife credit again, Monica, again, when I first met her, my spiritual practice was like severely lacking. I've been always walking the path, but I was in the left brain, you know, the David Hawkins, I was at the 375, 400 left brain level of mm. intellect, right? And so she said to me one day, she's like, you have this amazing body. You put so much time into your physical appearance. She's like, mm. how much spiritual work and practice are you doing? And I'm like, huh? What are, you <laughs> what are you talking about, Willis? And I started to think about that. And she would literally coach me and she would be like, dude, you've been with me now for two and a half years. Look at what I do every single morning. And every single morning, right. Charlie, and she's out in the backyard journaling, looking into Beautiful. nature, silence, the dogs are around her. You know, it, it's every day she did it, right? And I was not, I was oblivious to it. Literally, I'm you know doing my Jay Campbell stuff, which at that time was, I get on the bike and do my cardio, or I'm making my lists, you know, whatever it was, right? But it wasn't anything like that, and and so that profoundly impacted me to where I created my own, and now I do it every day too. And obviously, whenever I talk to people like you, we all have something fundamental at our core that we do to make us these, you know, again, I, as I would call aware beings. But, right. And mm -hmm. go ahead. No, 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 no. I just love that you said that about consistency, because I think that's my biggest tip or trick or hack. Whenever people tell me, oh, that routine and they're doing their set and their fitness and whatever. Look, here's, it's that simple. 
if it's anything that you need outside of the body that you have, you're not going to do it consistently, yeah. period. I, and I say that, and I know it may sound really bold as a statement, but look at what you've got and that's here and that's going to stay with you. That's the only home you're ever going to have forever totally is your true. body. It's your body. It's your sanctuary. That is it. That is it. So when we're talking about a routine that you're going to do every day for the rest of your life, start with it. Start with your body. Yeah. Utilize that incredible magic power has that is your body. And then everything else will follow. Sure. Then add more, more gadgets, add more things. And by the way, I'm a big fan. I, I love those gadgets and the little things. But start with your body. You know, start by stretching. If you look at, you know, anyone that has a pet will know that their dog, their cat, they start their day, they stretch, they yawn, they move. And we, we, what we do, we snooze the alarm, which by the way is terrible. We jump out of bed and off we go. We start. I literally start my day. I sound like a baby dragon. Like I was like, ah! and i stretch yeah. and i play <laughs> and i like you know maybe i've had cats for too long in my life but i i really look like a kitten when i wake up but and and so be it be whatever it is that feels good yeah. and i think there is so much almost social shame to making sound grounding moaning expressing yourself yawning stretching god you don't you're not we're not designed to get out of bed and off we go just no. No, be playful, be sensual with your duvet, with your sheets, with whomever. Just feel that body, you know? Like, give yourself a little massage, be playful, be curious. Yeah. Stretch your back. You know, people tell me, oh, I don't do yoga, I'm not flexible. Well, that's fine. You have a body, though. So, can you please stretch that? <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> It's so funny. It's so funny that you said that because last night my wife and I had our first massage in nine months. Now, coming from us, that's like impossible because like we regularly have an ART practitioner, Charlene, that I've been seeing mm. for 27 years. But because of this COVID, you know, whatever this is without re denigrating it, she has to go a lot of work and then, you know, she's obviously a little bit older too. And she's like, you know, not, you know, a lot of her clients are fearful. So she's just been like, I'm not working. So we didn't have a massage. So when we moved out of LA down to where we are now in Marietta, it's obviously a lot less restrictive down here. People don't give a shit. They're like, fuck the mask. I don't give a shit. I'm going to live my life. I'm not living life. I'm fierce. So anyway, both of us had a Thai massage last night and dude, mm. Oh my God, you know, she's standing up on my back, you know, elbowing me, stretching me. I mean, I felt amazing. I mean, it was amazing. I woke up this morning and I was like laying in bed, the same thing too. And I was like, what just happened to me? Right. But I was like, this is amazing. I haven't felt this in nine months, but you're so right. Physical curiosity, embracing the body. And, you know, I want to get into the next topic because it's probably going to get really deep about veganism, but. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the reality, no, it's okay. The reality is, is that people, I'm very outspoken about that. So it's going to be really awesome. But people <laughs> are so caught up in this jumping out of bed and grabbing their phones mm. or grabbing their technology or whatever the hell it is. And they're just sucked in. Curiosity is gone. Creativity is gone. Because now what are you? You're a consumer. You're consuming and you're being bombarded with blue light, of course. I mean, we could, I don't want to make a big thing about that, but it's like you really do have to create those boundaries. Oh, yeah. And no one, in my opinion, I don't care what happens to you, my, minus somebody dying in your family or somebody where you have, you're, you know, you're responsible to, but you should not check into technology at least for 60 minutes after you wake up. You should have some morning practice. You should have something where you go out into nature and connect, you know, uh, with the divine essence of mother earth. I mean, it's just mm. so crazy how many people just jump into their phones. It's like right. they wake up. Well, first you said it best, like hit snooze, hit snooze again. And then the awakening is reaching over to their phone and just desecrating any semblance of uh, awareness or spirituality because now they're just pulled right into the toxic tech. 
You know, I, I love that you said, don't check in with your technology before 60 minutes, but maybe I can add something to that as well. Sure. Don't check in with your technology because before you checked in with yourself. Exactly. Like, don't you dare touching that phone before you touch yourself. <laughs> I don't mean, well, although if you can touch yourself Beautiful. every morning, please do, but I, I don't mean that necessarily. I mean, no. like, just lay your hands on your belly and have a little bit of a breath. Like feel your shoulder, like stretch that neck. Yeah. Have a little round of breath, just very Beautiful. slow. Move the lower back. Yeah. Stretch your arms. You know, we see our it, kids, children stretch. Yeah. Pets stretch. We don't. So, however much time you may need before the check in point to the technology, check into yourself. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so many people don't. Okay. So I'll segue real quick then. So I love how you have this point. The dangers of veganism <laughs> from yoga communities. Obviously, you know, yeah. I mean, look, let's talk about it, right? Like, let's talk I, about I, it. I, I don't want to like be, beat the beat a dead horse because we're all biochemically unique, right? We all have, Absolutely. we all have various biochemical uh, individualities and sensitivities. So no one is a, you know, template. No one is a blank slate when it comes to this. We're all varying and have inter individual variances, but look, the human immune system, the gut, the microbiome developed over who knows, like you said, millions of years, hundreds of thousands yeah. of years. We don't know. They've hacked so many timelines and we, so much nonsense has been given to us. But at the end of the day, we as a species developed to digest animal protein. Okay. Now, yes, there are some, you know, aboriginals and species that are obviously close to the equatorial plains that didn't have to eat meat because they live in a society, I mean, a, a world, an agrarian community where everything is abundant. You know, they reach up and they can take a banana, whatever. I, I get those are outliers and those are exceptions, but dude, I've, son, I've seen so much research and I've experimented and I've worked with so many different people, like not getting animal protein in the brain will normally, for most people, again, they're outliers, but cause a deficiency and lead to issues. And I, you know, I always talk about this, but men, especially who go vegan for a long time, oh God. a lot of them go insane. Yeah. And they're so spiritually caught up in how it's wrong. You know, and again, great for you. If that's how you see things again, I'm not judging you, but like where they actually, as you know, Charlene, they will literally physiologically deteriorate and suffer um, rather than, embrace the fact that they can eat animal protein with you know the conscious aspect of it that they're okay because again they're in shame if they're eating yeah. another life force and again it's so silly right because all the great masters the spiritual gurus from any book in any culture in any divinity in any teaching will tell you that all of life is conscious and sentient so how can you judge eating meat over eating plants there's no exactly. discrimination, right? Right, right, absolutely. And I, I love that you brought up this topic and I feel that it must be spoken about because I still get anxieties when I recommend any of my clients or any of my friends or any of my loved ones to go on a yoga retreat. I have literal anxiety that they're vegan. gonna come back a vegan. I became no, a I, vegan! I do. And I, I say that because it happened to me, right? I, um, I grew up uh, eating organ meat from the earliest age. I think my mom literally put me from breast milk to organ meat very sure. quickly on. I have grown up eating lamb brains and kidneys and heart right. and, and everything that you can imagine can be eaten in an animal. My mom fed it to me and I still thank her today for having done so. Yeah. But sure. then... I got into yoga, as I mentioned, and I got into spirituality and I was reading a lot of philosophy and, and I became vegetarian. Sure. I, I, I'll admittedly say that. And I also went through a proper vegan phase. Um, well, well where, where do I begin? Okay, let's start by the fact that you're probably not even getting the right amount of fat, that 50% 50 of our brain is cholesterol, is fat. Yep. Our hormones are made out of fat. Yep. So whether you're a man or a woman, uh, your hormones will suffer greatly if you're not getting the right fat. Um, 
of cell membrane are made out of fat. So effectively, we are made out of fat with every single cell having fat in it. Yep. So, okay, then you want to tell me about eating avocados when you're in Europe and you're getting your avocados from Peru, but you're having a tough time with me because I'm de- eating champ, uh, l- a lamb chops that comes from a farmer right. that lives 10 minutes away from me, but right. you think you're being more eco-friendly by eating avocado from Peru that is out so, of the season. It's very right. Strange. Sure. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like there is things that just doesn't make sense. Um, and this whole idea that to be spiritual, you have to be vegetarian or vegan is complete nonsense. Nonsense, utter nonsense. Uh, I recently um, went to Lapland and learned about traditional hunting and traditional bone growth making. And I can tell you, Jay, without the shadow of the doubt, people that hunt, they adore nature. They have the utmost respect for the animal life, the utmost respect for the natural environment. And I'll go as far as saying that they probably know that environment a lot more than vegan that eat out of a plastic box. Yeah. Um, So, you know, again, it doesn't have to be either or. Everybody should learn what they're best uh, able to digest. And I would really strongly uh, invite everyone listening to do a genes test, a microbiome test, hormone test because there is no such thing as a health blanket advice for everybody. We're all different. So by all means, get your genes tested, get your hormones tested, get your uh, microbiome tested, but just be mindful of what you're being sold and what you believe in. And I love when you said that in previous of your podcast, Jay, believe with a big L I E inside, (laughs) you believe that human evolution has been based on, plant-based it's just not factual it's no. propaganda no, it's, and um it's playing with emotion by the way i was looking as you were talking um for the book which is a very very profound uh, book on that which is con- uh, not confessions but uh, the lost teachings of atlantis you know whoever mm. this beautiful book anyway they have the whole section in there on and i always have i've highlighted i actually have screenshots of it you know on my desktop and I won't bring them up right here, but like the most advanced, you know, uh, teacher, mentor, spiritual guru that was giving the advice in this book literally said that it doesn't matter what you eat, give it blessing and wish it well, right. thank it for its sacrifice to you. And again, obviously in the hierarchical understanding of life forms, right? If humans, and it might not be true, but if humans are the most advanced, you know, life form on this planet, then again, it just instinctually makes sense that from the bottom up, we are all eating each other in some form or capacity, right? Like my dog, my loving dog, my spiritual animal, Thor, as great as he is, is, he's a blue-nosed pit bull, amazing dog, like I love him to death, but as great as he is as being a loving, you know, 250 consciousness dog, what does he do instinctually when I let him out in the backyard? He races to find lizards, which he's going to eat. Of course. So it's so stupid. Yeah, it's so stupid that people get into these philosophical, argumentative, nonsensical debates and I know you know this, right? Like the whole vegan movement is a giant con from big agra, right? Like mm. the Game Changers movie and all the money oh. into that. All the people behind it created a corporatocracy for people to buy this garbage fake meat, Wonder Burger, whatever that bullshit is. And everyone at this point knows it's all a scam. Even the pro athletes that were in the movie were paid off. The whole thing is a sham, but that's the problem is that all these people on this planet right now that are behind that, you know, into that movement, as you said, are brainwashed. That's the best word that, you know, eating plants is the only way and that that's the way we were, you know, created. It's like you said, it's propaganda. And now you Mm -hmm. see the corporate machine behind the propaganda. So that just makes it even more clear to me. Absolutely. And and really, I think what's important to talk about as well, when you talk about eating meat or eating fish or any kind of animal flesh is 
adopt a nose to tail philosophy. So right. what I say is, yeah, of course, my favorite cup, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's a ribeye. I love it. It's my favorite. However, if I've ordered for my butcher a whole piece of meat, I'm not going to go just for those prime cuts. I'm also going to save every single bone. If I've had a T-bone, I'm going to make sure I buy some bone marrow. I'm going to make sure I get uh, some tongue, some oxtails, uh, some kidneys, some liver, some tendons, right. Right. some bits that are not as glamorous, perhaps not looking as sexy as your ribeye. However, out of respect for the whole animal, I'll eat everything as a whole. Right. And if you think about nature and our ancestors, cows don't come as a ribeye. They come as a howl cow, right? And the right balance is in eating a little bit of everything. Right. So you get the collagen from the bone broth, from the tendons, um, and, and you eat everything that comes as the animal comes. And I feel utterly respectful when I'm eating nose to tail yeah. and I'm eating all the odd bits. So yeah. instead of pointing fingers at people who eat meat, how about you try and gather up with your neighborhood, with your friends, go to the local farm, buy the whole carcass, chop it up, have a big freezer and, and divide it and make it a, make it a tribal right. action. Make it something that is meaningful for you, your health and the life of the animal. But people don't want that, do they? They want the small plastic box that is easy come and easy go right. and easy thrown away. I think that when it comes to food, has to be a little bit of primal you know i love to eat with my hands for example yeah, yeah. i literally chew my bones it's a yeah. good job i don't have a dog because he would be a miserable dog <laughs> he would not get any bones because i eat them all and and you know like someone who would tell me that obviously i don't do that in a restaurant because of social shaming or whatever but i think it's ridiculous you know i i've learned to eat with my hands by spending time in india and now you know, my mom sometimes wants me to leave the table because she's like, oh, my God. But yes. I'm like, oh, my God, you. I've, our hands are sensorial input, right? So when my hands feel the meat and the bone, I'm starting to salivate. By doing that, my enzymes are already switched yeah. on. I'm exactly. starting the digestion process. Yeah. Now, That's you true. tell me about gut health and bloating and IBS. I don't even know what that is i mean i know what that is because i help my clients right. overcome it but i've never had it because i eat the whole animal the whole part and i enjoy it Beautiful. and and blessing so important as well i always bless my food i put my hands in front of my plate and i'm literally grateful yeah. for the earth for the hands yeah uh, for the hunter for the fisherman for everyone and all of them and for how connected we are yeah. because we are connected it's so true we, we didn't even really even talk about that all right before i let you go i'll let you talk a little bit about a seer uh, yes obviously obviously as i said you know you're one of our influencer marketers um and obviously you, you you've been you've been using the product so you know just tell me or tell the audience you know your thoughts on a seer and obviously you know just people so people know like charlene is very well known um, across the pond as a biohacker she speaks at conferences and stuff like that she's very obviously you've heard her on this podcast she's extremely knowledgeable and aware and highly educated um so it's obviously an honor for us to have her promoting our products but you know just give us your general feedback on what you think of them yes of course and i have to say jay just to make it even you know as authentic as it is it's the first time i actually talk about a skincare product and it's the first time i've agreed to or be excited about being an ambassador for skincare because i think there is so much bs out there, there is. and people put so much chemicals and so much poison on their skin totally. particularly women so it means so much to me to represent and talk about a brand that i believe in thoroughly and every single ingredient in your cream and your serum is, is beautiful and helpful. And um, what I've noticed uh, when I got it, it was about now mm -hmm. nearly a month that I've been yep. using it. Yep. it um, first of all, it doesn't have all this crazy chemical scent, yeah. right? It's, it's, very, it's very plain, but in a good way. I yeah. mean, plain in the, doesn't smell like violet. Yeah, gold. It's literally, it's water and GHKCU. <laughs> that's it that's it and um it's it's beautiful 
you know, uh, it's really nice to use. And what I've noticed within a few days was just my uh, skin was a bit smoother, a bit clearer in the complexion. Yeah. yeah. Because my diet is so, so careful and very primal and I don't eat any toxin, my skin is really good as it is. Beautiful. However, it's made it even better. I notice in particular um, during my cycle, I normally have like tiny little, um, not spots, but little uneven around my chin sure. and just my upper lip, which is hormonal. Yeah. And since I've used those products, I've had none of them. I've had no blemishes at all, which is amazing. Now, the other thing that I've noticed, and I regretfully admit that, but I will say it because it's the truth, I used to have Botox done um, a few years back now. I've completely stopped. I don't believe in injecting myself with these things. So yeah. I believe in having a wholesome natural diet. Um, and I've noticed that the forehead area of the part where I used to get Botox done has really smoothened out. And that's amazing because I, I refuse to do it again. Um, but I was also thinking, right, now I need to, you know, live with it, so to speak. And actually, no, I don't. I just need <laughs> to get your cream and your serum. So yeah. that's, that's amazing. Um, and it, you're really one of the pioneer when it comes to using copper peptide. Uh, I think the amount that you put in is really making a difference. And I really recommend every woman and every man out there to just give it a go. If you believe in hacking your skin, look no further. So I, let me ask you then, um, that's, I mean, that's beautiful. If you want to give like one other tip, I will tell you, and I, I, you know, I told you off air, but I'll share it with the audience. Um, you know, we are coming with an eye cream, right? Yes. So with even a couple more peptides beyond GHKCU. So um, amazing stuff. I mean, Nick, Nick swears, and Nick Andrews, you know, the co-founder of Asir and obviously our formulator, he swears that this product will be as strong, if not stronger than Botox. Um, due to uh, what these other two peptides, which I can't really name right now, um, and I wouldn't even be able to off the top of my head anyway, but um, they will like massively reduce fine lines and wrinkles, which is obviously why most people use uh, Botox, right? Because again, you know, the way Botox works and stuff like that. But yeah, so we have, that's one of the three other products that's coming from us in probably, I would assume probably February, um, but, yeah. um, you know, once that product is in the marketplace, that will definitely most likely transform the beauty skincare industry, not just from a standpoint of like its effectiveness, but there'll be a lot of people that will want to come to the marketplace probably with a similar product. Because again, obviously Botox is, it's, you're, you're injecting a neurotoxin. <laughs> yeah. I, although Jay, I have to be honest, I've made that mistake in the past. So, you know, hands, hands up here. I'm guilty. No, I've never but done I it. My wife is a huge aware. believer. No, look, my wife is a huge believer in Botox. She's been doing Botox since she was like 43 years old, you know, but she also stopped since she's been using, and she's been obviously experimenting with our new cream. And she's also said amazing things too. She's like the, the guinea pig beta tester of the product. So, but uh, a lot of great stuff coming from us. But did you want to share any other hacks on skin real quick before I let you go? Oh, yes, absolutely. So when it comes to uh, collagen, I think that everyone should increase their collagen consumption a little bit. Um, yeah. So I have this routine. I put collagen peptides uh, in my coffee. Uh, they come in um, sort of, they look like a powder, a white powder. It's, pretty, it's flavorless, but you get... 20 gram uh, and it's pure protein, yep. it doesn't net carb zero, it's yep. amazing. So everyone eat a little bit of peptide. I think what's really powerful with your cream is to do three things, to do application on topical um, peptide, then take your collagen through your diet yep. or through supplementation with collagen, make bone broth, drink bone broth, eat liver because it's really high in vitamin A. So it's going to be excellent. So lamb liver or calf liver. And then the third thing is you re use red light therapy in oh, addition to putting that. your cream and your serum. So you put the cream and serum and then you do the red light therapy and then it's as close as it gets to magic. <laughs> it, it, it is, by the way. My wife has been doing that and obviously you've been doing that now too. Um, yeah, no, it's absolutely tremendous. 
Um, do you use Juve Red Light or what Red Light company do you have? No, a Red Light Rising. It's the yeah. UK. So Juve is, yeah, Juve is the American version. Uh, I haven't tried them. Maybe when I come the other side of... Uh, <laughs> actually, I can connect you with uh, Scott. He's actually a good friend of mine. And, uh, That'd be great. I'll, I'll connect you with him and say, hey, you know what? You should talk to her. She can definitely help promote your product. Yeah, I'll be all my serum and my red light. <laughs> And you honestly, know what honestly, a red light is red light right now. I mean, two years ago when Juve first came on, I would tell you go to Juve because like that's the highest end stuff. But now they've improved the technology so much in two years, like everything, right? I keep talking about like the golden age is here. If you can only recognize it with all these wonderful biomedical devices and technologies and stuff like that. But now red light has dramatically made changes. Now I'm not, you know, before people come at me and say, well, Jay, there's all those red light devices on Alibaba and eBay and, you know, they sell them for 60 bucks. And I'm like, well, come on, you know, that's not real red light. But I mean, most of the higher end red light companies right now are putting out the same technology. Just make sure that it's a reputable company and that the price is similar to like, you know, if even if it's a little cheaper than Juve or whatever, just make sure that it's putting out the same uh, Hume as far as electromagnetic frequency that's coming out and stuff like that. But it's it, it, like I said, the red light industry now is like overrun with scammers uh, and fake, you know, devices that are like really, really low end and stuff like that. So just be careful and cautious as always, you know, a consumer, there's a huge difference, um, you know, from driving a Camry to driving a Mercedes, right? Yeah, so of course. It's just, yeah. I mean, it's just that people get caught up and stuff and it's the same thing, you know, with our products, I'll just say that, that there's a probably 20, GHKCU products on Amazon right now and they're all fake because they're selling for a price that's less than the actual cost, the manufacturer yeah. cost of real GHK crystals. So it's like, if you, you know, we know what that cost is. And if you're selling your product below the wholesale cost of actual GHKCU powder, then that means you're not selling GHKCU and you're just yeah. putting it on the name of the label and adding a purple color additive to whatever crap is in your, you know, solution. So, you know, we always tell people, cause you know, that's the number one thing is like, wow, your stuff is so expensive. And I'm like, well, it's cause it's real, you know, well, yes. to, be able to make a profit margin, you know, it costs a lot of money to make our products. So that's why we charge you $120 to buy a product, you know, without a discount. So, I mean, it is what it is. It's apples and oranges, but be always buyer beware. That's well, it. yeah, sure. And you know, when it comes to the pushback on costs, the thing I would say when it comes to skincare, it's literally your biggest organ, right? So it's not vanity to take right. care of your skin. It's vitality. Is exactly. Are you looking after your biggest organ? If the skin is not looking glowy and healthy and has elasticity and has collagen, there is something internal going on that's probably not great. It's, in, it's one of those indicators, one of those marker. If your skin is not optimal, there is something inside that is not optimum either. Yeah. So skincare is important. It's, it's, it's not just uh, nice to have, it's a must have. And uh, I can tell you now, I don't wanna have a day without your cream. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think you will. All right. Well, Charlene, listen, this has been a profound podcast. I mean, I've, you and I have spoken for actually an hour and eight minutes, which is oh. <laughs> amazing. I rarely go this long, but you, you offered so much from a um, spirituality and a consciousness perspective. And I just think that it was phenomenal. Now people want to work with you, um, you know, coach with you. What is the best way they can do that? Uh, they can uh, find me on LinkedIn or they can find me on my website, www.charlengizel.com or Instagram. Um, but I work minimum for a period of three months. I don't think that you can really make any significant change and optimize your health um, in a shorter period than that. Um, but I'll be super happy if someone mentions uh, your podcast to uh, take them off the waiting list and uh, have a consultation with me. That's awesome. Yeah. And you probably don't be surprised. You probably will get a bunch. Um, actually, uh, let me also say too, that if you want to purchase with a 15% discount off of any ASEER products, use the code Charlene 15. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. That's so Charlene 15, just go to ASEERCustom.com, buy whatever you guys are doing. And then just in the coupon code, put Charlene um, 15 and you will get 15% off your products, which actually is as good a coupon as we offer with the exception being, uh, you know, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but this thing isn't gonna run until after that anyway, so it won't matter. So it's still a great discount for people. 
Um, Charlene, it's been an honor to have you on my show. I truly appreciate you. I send you massive love and light. I look forward I <laughs> to working with you in the future. And again, to all the amazing people that watch this podcast without you guys, it would not be me. Please support the amazing people that come on. Go to Charlene's website. It's Charlene, Giselle, G-I-S-E-L-E dot com. And also find her on Instagram. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very, very soon.